Hello everyone, um, welcome to episode 17. As you can see, I am on my main account for the time being because I decided today was going to be talking about Rift. And I thought that starting on my main account would be a good idea, mainly because I already have most of... I say most, I have a decent set of catalysts. They're not leveled up, unfortunately, so you just can't really see the full power of them. As I'm not at that stage yet where I can be challenging for like diamond rank. I get gold one every single week because gold one is relatively easy for me. <clears throat> the only people who beat me are genuinely people who have better defenses and better fighters. So, I mean, I still have, I have good fighters. But in terms of defending, um, imagine that, that Xenomorph and that Terminator would be like diamond 20 plus or 20k plus power kind of like you'd expect to see like headhunter or overclock there maybe even jawbreaker just something like that but i have i have okay fires for now um so yeah i think today i've just checked the shop and i was gonna save um i was gonna save up a bunch of stuff but i've decided that i just want to buy this relic real quick and I'm deciding whether I need to sell this or not I'm thinking no because it's got 15% HP it could be useful somewhere I would sell this but 15% attack with piercing is fantastic the only reason it's not on my parasol right now is because I have a better one somewhere if I can find this one it's right there never mind <clears throat> this one has the same stats except crit damage instead of element bonus so today should also not be too long of a video it might be around the 20 minute mark like it could be it could very well be it's just the rift unfortunately it takes a little bit of explaining in some cases um just because i want to make sure you guys fully understand everything that is a good chair for defense I'm going to keep that because it's got attack and piercing. Uh, we've already got a better one, so we'll get rid of that one. Also, this is another way to explain uh, moves. Like, you don't need certain moves. So, you can get away with selling moves. Depending on what they are. But obviously, if you're a low account, like on my smaller account, I'm not going to be selling many moves for a long time. Because I don't have better options yet. So... I'll get rid of that, that's the last one we'll get rid of. Because it's got attack with numbers. So I decided that we'll just open we'll open this relic first. I have a peacock relic that I would have opened instead, but I got that from a deployment and I'm planning to save them up. So I just thought well for the video I'll buy this one and open it. And it's bronze anyway. Shiny. Oh more pain wheels. You know, I'm just going to open it. If the game loads, please. I've already got all peacocks. I'm just going to open it. So we're just going to speed it open like this. Yeah, nothing worth watching. The gold moves, I'm going to save because it will be part of the video. So, time to get into the juicy part of it. I would have obviously done this on the first part of my... I would have done this on my smaller account to begin with, but... I need to set up the full rift base, and I'm going to explain who I go with where and why for the time being and this game is very laggy at the moment okay there we go so this is what Rift looks like as a menu um, you have three opponents to choose from you can click free refresh which um, for low level players honestly it doesn't matter unless of course you no it doesn't matter if you challenge someone on a low level and you lose it's fine because what I noticed, which is great, is no matter what, you're guaranteed Bronze 4 rewards, which if I only got Bronze 4 on my Smurf account, I would be 100% happy with those 100 Rift Coins. Those 100 Rift Coins can turn into 150 skill points early on, which is fantastic for someone like me. Like, because of that Armed Forces, it's pro I'm probably going to be getting a lot of Cerebella skill points when they show up, and I need Eliza skill points for Bloodbath. And I also need, um, if I really wanted to, Valentine skill points for less hope, as she's a defender. But low-level accounts, you don't need to worry about any of that. 
I could still do Last Hope because she's not too bad as a support, but there's a better support that I would rather do the Valentine's uh, origin story for to try and get, so yeah. Um, this is what your base looks like. Uh, there's a lot of different catalysts. I would advise doing something that I've done uh, in terms of like having multiple of the same element in one base because of like synergies. And there's a lot of different bases that you can do. So like my main one here is freeze frame with untouchable and plot twisted. And what I've done is synergized it with frost armor, which affects all water element defenders. Frost armor is one of the strongest catalysts in the game right now. I haven't leveled it up because as explained before, I am not at that point yet, so I've just left it. Um, Return to Sender is a squiggly um, only, so obviously there's character specifics, there's element specifics, and tier specifics, like bronze, silver, and gold. So, I'm pretty sure all, if I check these, these should all be gold, right? Can I check? I tapped it. Okay. Yeah, okay, so I have leveled it up a little bit. What would that level up? It levels up the seconds for armor. Okay. So... Obviously, like, different catalysts do different things, but Frost Armor, Water Element specific, means it works on only waters. Return to Sender is a squiggly specific anyway, so obviously it only works on uh, squiggly. And Hollow Points, it's a good catalyst, like, it's a very good catalyst, but it's not probably, it's probably not what I would want as my ideal catalyst here. I would probably want, ideally, like, a special exception or a curse of knowledge or something, but... I don't have access to that luxury yet. So this is a peacock only specific, as it's got peacock on it. Other catalysts can include such things like, oh, I have super slow-mo, that would also be pretty good. So you can get ones like this that aren't character specific and they are universal, they work on everyone. Or you can get, do I have an autoimmune as an example? Just a base autoimmune. So here you go. Um, autoimmune, as you can see here, it's only a silver, but imagine it was a gold. The gold would be a 50% chance when suffering a debuff to gain immunity. That's universal as it works on everyone. But sometimes you can get character specific ones, such as this one. This guarantees that Big Ben, every time he suffers a debuff, he will gain immunity. Which is great on some fighters, such as Resident Evil, in the case he takes armor break. Or Dream Band if you really wanted to, but Dream Band already gains immunity when knocked down, so it's kind of pointless. But you get the point. Um, there are obviously some catalysts that I would advise going for. So, waters, obviously frost armor. That's that's like my strongest boss node that I can come up with right now. Um, the second strongest that you could do is a light node, like this one. I could have done, let's say, dreadlocks with um, that Assassin's Greed and maybe Epic Sacks, something like that. But I only have one. No, okay, good. I was about to say, I thought I only had one catalyst. That wasn't good. This one is a last words node, that's what light is normally known for, last words and lightweight. So I know for a fact that I have lightweight here. And you can see lightweight, begin the match with 10 seconds when flinching and immunity. So light is great because there's a lot of buffs that, ha that it has access to. Water is great because of armor and reflecting damage. Um, I've only done fire here because I just decided to, fire is not the best. Um, but it's because Private Dick and, and Red Velvet are relatively tanky units, so I put them there just because. Uh, you can do Dark like I've done here, um, and Dark's specific is Dark Nut. It sounds really good when you first see it, like begin the match with five stacks of armor, and it's timeless armor. It can't be removed in any way. Um, as it says there, you also, if you hit the armor, uh, you have a 10% chance to get ble to get bleed on yourself for 5 seconds. Um, this works, if some of you low level players know, this is amazing early on for Resident Evil. Because Resident Evil has a 5% chance to stun. And 5 armor, if you haven't invested in piercing, means you take 0 damage. And the only way to remove it easily is with a character who can instantly inflict armor break, or you can use an Eliza with Chaos Banish. So, it's not very strong late game, but it's very strong if you have the, the right fighters. And you might be thinking, why have you got Neuromancer and Class Cutter there then? They're not exactly defensive units. Mainly because this is a high risk, high reward node. As I can show you now, Class Cutter 
has a 10% chance for her special moves, such as this hairball, to be unblockable and inflict death mark for 15 seconds. If I had, do I have any accuracy by any chance? No. If I had accuracy, that would be 15%, like with 50% accuracy. And hairball hits six times-ish. So it's a pretty scary um, defense node, in my opinion. Plus, Neuromancer is more of a, it's a check of whether you can actually, um, it's a check of whether you are able to, like, deal with her, essentially, because most of the time the AI is going to do safe combos, and as you can see there, Neuromancer is one of the strongest units in the game because she's able to drain Blockbuster meter every time, a, every time the opponent blocks. So, I have been level 3 immediately by Neuromancer, I level 3 immediately with Neuromancer. Obviously, her stats you can see there aren't like the best. I could have went with more HP for this, but because I'm using her as an offensive unit anyway. And she has Dark Note. It doesn't matter. Why is there an Into Thin Air there? Give me a second. I'm going to change that because that... <laughs> okay. Alright, we'll put Cast of Knowledge there for now. That's strange. Or oh, can I do Final Fight? Final Fight. Okay, here we go. Final Fight is actually a really good one. Um, every It prevents blockbuster finishes if you have one like this that's character specific plus gold because it has a one it has a guaranteed chance to proc. It prevents blockbuster finishes. Blockbuster finishes are a point uh, are a hundred points every time you do it. There's also when you have to take you have to take into account um, if you don't lose any fights at all. I'm pretty sure it's an extra like five hundred points ish. You can get, I think, around. You can get up to 300 based on your health. You can get up to so many based off your time, and all of it adds up at the end to a score relatively higher than 10,000 most of the time. Um, the highest I'm pretty. I don't know what the highest is you can get, but the highest I've seen myself get is around like the 13.5, 13.6 mark, like 13,600 points. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of things to take into account. Um, it might be easier for me to explain on my lower account in a minute that I'll get onto in like a couple minutes. I've got to uninstall the game and reinstall it to get on that account. And we'll get to that point. I would do a rift on my main account, but obviously because of it being relatively... I'm trying to be relatively beginner friendly. This is not beginner friendly because I might end up, be, I might end up facing things that you're like, I don't know what's happening. So I would rather go against a lower level fighter to show you exactly what's going on. So I will see you back in a couple minutes. I just need to get on the other account. Okay guys, welcome back. Um, just got a couple of things to open real quick. Like the day of the relic, nothing too important. Unless there's an OI. Shards, okay. <clears throat> so something else I didn't explain in the previous video is, or in this previous section is that obviously or I did explain, I don't have every catalyst yet. So, me putting that curse of knowledge at the end was just me putting in what I thought was best for that moment. And curse of knowledge is quite a solid catalyst anyways. I'm looking for a certain catalyst called Don't Poke the Viewer for my Neuromancer. Which, um, every, it basically means Neuromancer will not get one shot. Because as you know, pain wheels have relatively low base health. Um, it's quite difficult to make them work, essentially. So that is to make her uh, only have a 10% health damage cap, essentially. It helps out a lot. And what that does is if they hit for the 10%, they end up having to... They take a percentage of the damage back. I don't... I think it might be 100% and you level up the percentage. I'm not honestly sure. Don't take my word for it. I might be an idiot. Another thing I didn't explain is um, the way to get Catalyst. So as you can see down here, they put it all the way at the bottom for a good reason, essentially. You can buy Catalyst Relics with Theonite. And I have enough Theonite right now, as you can see. But um, one thing that they did okay with this is that, as you can see, it guarantees a Silver Catalyst on 10 plus 1, which is fine. A low level player is not going to be wanting to touch this feature for a very long time. 
like a very long time because there's no need to essentially um i could do it essentially to turn my i could turn my fianite into rift coins like i keep saying essentially i know um but i could turn all my fianite into rift coins basically um it it would work in that sense, but at the same time, it's not necessarily worth it for a low-level player to be doing such things. I need the Fear Knight to roll 10 plus 1 relics um, to get... to get fighters. And that's another thing I want to talk about, by the way. People are saying... I, I keep seeing people uh, say in chat, like, you, you, can, you can save up Fear Knight to get coins, as you can see there. 1600 fear knight saves if you save that up you will get 1.8 million uh canopy coins and while it is very very good and very valuable it's not something a new player wants to be doing in my opinion and the reason for that is because 10 plus ones guarantee a silver the 1.8 million coins by the way is what people would do like my level uh later on in the game because, say, you wanted to wait for a new character, which is what a lot of people are doing. Like, they're waiting for the next character. Um, they would just save up a bunch of relics, like, a bunch of premier relics from the shop. Um, and they only cost 50,000 coins. So, if you calculate that, 1.8 million canopy coins can be turned into 36 premier relics instead of 17. Uh, from the from like just buying them flat out and I say 17 because obviously the plus one from the 10 plus one uh, but the thing is you get a, as I said you get a guaranteed silver from the 10 plus one and I feel like it's safer for me to do that rather than wait an hour every single time to see if there's a relic in the shop so it's you can have your take on it but that's my opinion um so another way you would get catalyst, as you can see there, there's one in the shop already. Uh, this is not essentially a great one, in my opinion, but it is there. And that's 200, um, that's 200 rip coins. A bronze costs 100, a silver costs 200, and a 400, and a gold costs 400, whereas special catalysts, such as frost armor, like water element only, uh, return to sender, squiggly only, they cost 600. But they are very worth it because it's one of the easiest ways to get it. Another way that you can get catalysts early on is I know that there's a few accolades that give them. And I apologize for this menu because it's going to keep coming up. I'm assuming it would be probably not in story mode, probably events. There is a there is a section. Is it here? Ah, there you go. You can get a few catalysts here. If you level up moves, you can get catalysts. But I would not advise getting catalysts that way because you have the level up moves, and it's not something you want to do early on. Another way you can get Catalyst is from here, this is the best way. If you achieve Silver Rank, you get 5 Gold Catalysts, like 5 random Golds, that is really good. Gold Rank, you get 7 random, and the one I haven't got on my main account yet is if you achieve Diamond, you get 10. But, we're probably not going to be hitting Silver or Gold for a very long time, potentially. So I wouldn't worry too much about that for now. Catalysts... Uh, for, uh, for early players, you don't need to worry about. And I'm just going to skip straight through this because this is kind of irrelevant. This isn't because it's going to make me build my base. Um, it's going to make me put in some assault. And it's going to make me put in just any catalyst here. So the best catalyst that I could see that would work would be also immune. So if I do that, that's one done. What I'm going to do is immediately take off that some assault. <laughs> because um, I want to think about my options and I guess my options immediately the only option I really have is to put the strongest fighters in the best places possible so um, it's not gonna make too much of a difference early on exactly what I do so obviously this isn't great for typing I'm just thinking of what I could do this is probably the best outcome early on, mainly because of Killjoy, if I buy her skill, which I'm probably going to do just to make this have a slightly better chance. 
to um, actually get somewhere. So, get that, get that. I only have that right now, so I can only get that one. I can get that actually, never mind. I can't get the final skill, the final one, which would be make teammates resurrect with 25? Question mark? 25. 20% resurrection is still okay for now. And that killjoy is not going to make too much of a difference right now because it's only a 600 power killjoy. But this is the strong, in my opinion, this is probably the strongest outcome, mainly because Super Slow Mo is on there. That is going to slow people down a lot, especially when it's a character specific one like that. Uh, character specifics have better, like, odds and better, like, they are, they're just more efficient. Um, the only other ones I could really put on here is Curse of Knowledge and Autoimmune. But I'm going to put that like that because it's the boss mode, you pretty much have to buff it up as much as possible. This one. I'm thinking immediately, as we have shot in the dark, I'm gonna put shot in, I'm just gonna put dark fights on here. So the ones I'm gonna put on are probably gonna be the most threatening, and the most threatening would be these three. Primarily because Inkling, she has the unblockable chance for projectiles and Wolfsbane because of his throwing. If he activates hype mode, his throwing is on his, uh, un like, unstoppable. And you might be thinking, well, why haven't you put all, why haven't you put the rest of the catalysts that you have on there? Mainly because Doomsday Device isn't fantastic, and this is for a Robo, and I don't have a Robo right now, so... It doesn't matter what I do for the rest, honestly. I can just, I can just fill them as they are, so I'm just gonna put the strongest units that I have possible on each one of these. So, Rusty is obviously not great. Rainbow Blight is decent. I might actually just do those two, just to be safe. Although, again, like I said, it doesn't make too much of a difference. Um, another thing I should also be looking at is, as you can see there, there's already base modifiers. They change every week based on the week of Elemental Prize Fight. So last week was a Dark Elemental Prize Fight, meaning that um, it was Dark Modifiers. So always keep a lookout for that. And as I'm thinking, it's biofeedback. Um, biofeedback, if you have it, put don't go, don't put don't poke the viewer on here. Sorry, I couldn't get my words out. Um, and put a pain wheel with any marquee. Um, but I would rather go with no. If biofeedback and don't, if you have biofeedback and don't poke, you put on a tainted blood pain wheel. And what a tainted blood pain wheel does is I'll show you really quickly. Um, every time you crit, 50% of the damage will be reflected back. That goes to 100%. So what you could do is don't poke on this, which would be disgusting, because it reflects damage every 10% health, and it gives her a damage cap. Every time they crit, you reflect 100%, plus biofeedback, bio which is 150%. It would be a very, really difficult node to beat. You could also do someone like Overclock here, because... Every time she gets three stacks of barrier, she reflects. Like, there's a lot of options. But it doesn't make too much of a difference right now. Chicks dig scars. That's actually a really good one. If I had Criminal Mind, Criminal Mind would probably go on here for me. Because of that. Uh, permanent regen and permanent enrage is pretty scary. Especially if you keep procking it. I think I'm just going to do Vaporwave here because Vaporwave is a decent solo defender. But... Yeah, that's all I can do really for that. This video has actually been 20. Jesus Christ. Right. I think what I'm gonna do is end this section here. This is gonna. I'm gonna do this over the course of today. Like, I'll release two videos today. This is gonna be part one of it, just explaining everything. Part two is gonna be me doing a few battles and showing you exactly what I'm going to do for those battles. So, yeah, I'm going to get to work on editing this immediately, and I'll release it, and if you've been watching the entire time, um, I appreciate you, because this is a very long video, it's a lot to explain. Obviously, I haven't explained everything, because I'm not perfect, and I'm not exactly a high-level player, so I can't guarantee everything what I say is going to be true, but I hope that it helps a little bit. Also, um... One last thing, 
I'm not. I don't want to sound like a beggar. I don't. I don't normally. I would never normally ask for this, but I would love it if you're like just watch. If you just watch these without being a sub, I would love it if you subscribe because it lets me know. It lets me know specifically how many people are actually like enjoying what I'm doing and engaged in it. Because no matter what, I'm gonna keep doing this regardless. I'm gonna try and do it daily as much as possible because I like to, I would love to help you guys. And that's what I'm doing, hopefully. I'm hoping I'm helping you guys. So I'd love it if you could just show me that you are like with me with this. Um, but yeah, I 100% would normally not ask something like that because I don't want to sound like a beggar. I'm just asking because I want to know if people are enjoying what I'm doing. Also, we hit over 50 views on that one video, the Valentine video. That is insane. For someone who's only been doing YouTube for like not even a month. Thank you for that. I really do mean it. So, um, this should be released not to, uh, probably, depending on how long it takes, this video is probably going to be released in like, I don't know, two hours from now, maybe? Probably even less? And I've still got plenty of time to do the next part, so I'm just going to edit this now and do the next part, so... I will see you probably within a, probably within a couple of hours, so... I would love it if you could come back for then. So, see you then.